Welcome to this information on spinal surgery at the Matter Private Hospital in Dublin. There is a team of experienced professionals here ready to guide you through your surgery and to help you with your recovery. We will care for you throughout your stay, but we will encourage you to participate in your care and recovery. Working together at providing you with as much information as possible in advance of your surgery has been shown to greatly improve the success of your surgery. We want you to experience the excellent care available here at the Matter Private and be able to return to the active lifestyle you deserve and can enjoy. This video will provide you with information about what to expect before your surgery, during your hospital stay and after you are discharged. It is intended to give you the basic information which will guide you and help you prepare for your surgery. Spine surgery varies from patient to patient and if you need more specific instructions or more detailed information for your surgery, your surgeon will take you through this. Lumbar decompression or discectomy surgery is used to treat pain which is radiating from the back into the leg. This can happen when a damaged disc is pressing on a nerve ending. The spine is a column of solid blocks called vertebrae. In between each vertebrae are round pads of tough spongy tissue known as discs. If damaged, the disc can press on a nerve, which can often cause symptoms such as persistent leg pain, pins and needles, weakness or numbness. We often call it a slip disc or a bulging disc. The medical term is prolapsed or herniated. The surgery involves removing a piece of the disc or bone which is causing you problems. Most people who have this surgery are discharged from hospital one to two days after. Hi, my name is Sylvia. I am the lead orthopedic nurse here at the Matter Private Hospital. I have been caring for patients for many years and there have always been lots of questions about what to expect. I know coming into the hospital can be a daunting experience. So I will take you through what to expect when you're here and some tips and advice for your recovery at home. For most of my patients, going home is the best part of their stay. There are a number of simple things you can do before your hospital stay which will help with your recovery when you are discharged home. Diet. A healthy balanced diet will help with the healing process. Smoking. Doctors strongly recommend you stop smoking at least 8 weeks before your surgery. As a smoker, you have a much higher risk of serious complication both during and after surgery. It slows down the healing process. If you find it hard to stop smoking, you should at least try to cut down. Advanced preparation. To make it easy for you when you get home, have everything set up and ready before you go into hospital. Here are some suggestions. Ask someone to help with the daily activities like cleaning, shopping, laundry, driving the children around. Do a shop to stock up in advance with the basics so you only have fresh items to pick up. Make and freeze some meals in advance. If you live alone and need extra support, our medical social work team can tell you about the support available in the community. Within the month of surgery, you will attend the preoperative assessment clinic here at the Matter Private. We call it the PAC for short. The clinic is to make sure that you have no health issues that might delay or cancel your surgery. You will meet a nurse who will go through a number of checks and tests with you. These include health assessment and medication review, blood pressure, pulse, height and weight check, blood and urine sample test, MRSA swabs, ECG of your heart, X-ray of your back and possibly a chest X-ray. In some cases, the anesthetist may also meet you at this clinic. If you have any test results or scans from another hospital in the last four months, bring this with you. Before you leave the clinic, we will go through the instructions for your surgery, including the date and time and the information about fasting and medication. The appointment can take three to six hours in total. So if you would like, please bring someone with you to the appointment. Here is a list of items to bring with you. Loose comfortable clothes, which are easy to get on and off. Shoes and slippers. Think safety, not style with your footwear. They should be flat with non-slip soles and have a good back with solid support. If they have laces, 
make sure they don't untie easily. Toiletries. Any personal effects to make your stay comfortable, ensure you have an adequate supply of medication you are currently using and bring it to the hospital with you. You will be admitted to the hospital on the morning of surgery. Remember to follow the instructions regarding your fasting and medication. Before you leave home, make sure that you have a shower or bath, paying special attention to the skin folds. For example, under the breast, the stomach area, groin or the navel. Once you arrive, a nurse will check your details and take your observations, which include blood pressure, pulse rate, oxygen level and breathing. And also the theater checklist to make sure that you are ready. You will meet with a surgeon who will make sure that you understand your procedure well and that you are happy to be taken for surgery. You will be taken to the theater reception area first and then you go to the anesthetic room. Hello there, my name is Dr. Agnes Hayes. I'm one of the consultant anesthetists working here in the Matter Private Hospital. And I, or one of my anesthetic colleagues, will be looking after you for your spinal surgery. We'll be seeing you during what we call the perioperative period. We'll be seeing you preoperatively in the preoperative assessment clinic. We'll be delivering your anesthetic on the day of surgery. And then we'll be looking after you and monitoring you very closely when your surgery is completed while you're on the surgical ward or while you're in the intensive care unit. I think it's important that you know there's a very wide spectrum of surgical procedures for spinal surgery and there's also a very broad range of indications for that surgery. So it's important therefore we individualise your care and we formulate a care plan that's suitable for you. In our experience it's important also that you don't benchmark or compare yourself to others who are having similar sounding or type of procedures. In this manner then you'll achieve the best possible outcome. We'll see you at the preoperative assessment clinic here at the Mater Private Hospital. Ideally, you would attend about a month in advance, but mostly we see people about a week or two before their surgery. At the clinic, you'll be attended by both a nurse and an anaesthetic doctor. We use the opportunity at the clinic to conduct a full review of your medical history, both your past medical history and your current medical history. We also collate information um, that we have um, on you from other specialists you may be attending or from your general practitioner. We use this information then to formulate a unique uh, intraoperative care plan for you for the day of surgery. In some instances we may need to conduct some further tests, we may need to delay your surgery for a period in order to optimise your medical condition before surgery. In our experience it's a very good idea if you bring a family friend or relative with you to the preoperative assessment clinic. Now, this will help you to retain all the information that we provide you with and will be, of course, of benefit to you during your stay at the hospital. On the day of surgery, then, we'll provide you with an appropriate anaesthetic for your medical condition and for the type of surgery you're having. We are fully aware that you may be very anxious on the morning of surgery, but we'd encourage you to leave the responsibility for your care with us on that day. During the surgery, we'll be intensively monitoring you from the point of view of your neurology, your cardiovascular and respiratory system. Once the surgery is completed, then you'll be transferred into the recovery area for a further period of intensive monitoring. And from here, then we will decide whether you need to be transported to the intensive care unit, the special care unit or the surgical ward. Immediately post-operatively, our focus will be ensuring that you've recovered completely from your surgery and from your anaesthetic, so we'll be intensively monitoring your vital signs. In a later period then, our focus will be on mobilisation, pain relief and ensuring that there are no post-operative complications. At this point, I would just like to say we look forward to working with you and meeting with you during the course of your treatment here in the Matter Hospital for your spinal surgery. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions at any stage. And I do hope that the information we provided with you today is of some use. Thank you. When your surgery is finished, you are transferred to the recovery area until you come around. Here you are monitored by the nursing team who make sure that your pain is under control and your observations are normal, which include your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing and your oxygen level. When you are stable, you will be taken to the orthopedic ward. When you are awake, you can slowly start to eat and drink again. Sips of water first, followed by something light like tea and toast. 
there will be an IV line in your hand or your arm and you might have a drain tube in your back for 24 to 48 hours. This is to drain any extra fluid from the wound. Controlling pain is a very important part of your recovery. While pain is to be expected, it is not something you should have to suffer as it will slow down your recovery. If you feel in pain, do let us know. It is easier to control and relieve the pain before it gets too bad. Don't wait and tell it like it is. Do not try to brave it out. Let's now have a look at what to expect in the days following your operation. You will normally be allowed to get out of the bed the day after surgery. This is the best way to get your muscles moving and to prevent post-operative complications. You must have a nurse or a physio with you when getting out of the bed who will show you how to move your back safely and correctly. You are at increased risk of fall after surgery, so please wait until the physio or nurse is with you. We recommend you start your deep breathing and leg exercises as soon as possible. Your physio will show you how to do this. On either day one or day two after surgery, the drain tube and urinary catheter will be removed. You will have to wear white compression stockings for four to six weeks following surgery. These help to prevent clothes from developing. Sitting for longer than 20 minutes should be avoided. You can lay flat, stand or walk instead of sitting. Let us know if you are prone to constipation and we will provide you with laxatives if necessary. Next, our physiotherapists are going to talk to you about starting to move after your surgery. We in the physio department work as part of the team to facilitate best outcomes from your spinal surgery. We do this by getting you mobile as soon as possible after surgery, providing you with gentle exercises to assist your recovery, and by giving you advice on the do's and don'ts for when you go home. Most people are ready for physiotherapy the day after surgery. However, it's important that you do not get up on your own the first time as you could get lightheaded and fall. So please wait for the nurse or the physiotherapist to come. When we come to see you, we'll get you out of bed. Once you're able, we'll take you for a walk, first on the flat and then on the stairs. We'll also show you rehabilitation exercises that you'll need to do when you go home. To start with, let's take a look at the easiest way to get in and out of bed. Bend your knees, reach your arms across your body and roll onto your side. Allow the weight of your arms and legs to roll you over. Once on your side, swing your legs over the edge of the bed while at the same time pushing yourself up into the sitting position. You can do the same in reverse to get back into bed. Let's have a look at this. Sit on the edge of the bed, lie down onto your side and bring your feet up onto the bed. Roll gently onto your back or you can lie on your side if you prefer. To rest comfortably, some patients find it helpful to place the pillow under their knees when lying down. If on your side, you may also find it helpful to place a pillow between your knees. At the end of this video, we're going to show you the exercises that you'll need to do for the first six weeks once you are home. For now, Sylvia is going to talk to you about getting ready to go home. And remember, once you are home, do not lift, pull or drag anything heavy for six to eight weeks. Most people are discharged one to two days after surgery. You will need to arrange transport home and if it is a long journey, Allow time for breaks so you are not sitting for more than 20 minutes at a time. It is advisable to have someone at home with you when you are first discharged. Remember, when you are at home, do not lift, pull or drag anything heavy for at least 6 to 8 weeks. At this point, you should have a follow-up appointment with your consultant who will advise you whether or not these restrictions should stay in place. Prolonged sitting should also be avoided. Remember to wear rear compression stockings for four to six weeks following surgery. Before your discharge, your wound will be checked and the dressing changed. A waterproof dressing is left in place covering your wound. 
After 5 to 7 days, you can change the dressing and check the wound for any potential signs of infection and clean if it is necessary. You will be shown how to do this before you leave the hospital. Remember to replace the dressing. After 2 weeks, you can remove the dressing completely and the sterile strips used on the wound will wash away with your next shower. If you have stitches, you will be given instructions about their removal. Let's go over how to check your wound. Wash your hands with hot soapy water for at least 30 seconds. If you have one, use a disinfectant hand gel as well. Use the back of your fingers to check if the wound is hot or feels tender. Check wound for any signs of oozing, redness or an unusual smell. If you notice any of this, you may have an infection, so please call us or your GP. Finally, I have pulled together a checklist for you to go through before you leave. Check you have your wound care instructions, extra dressings, prescriptions particularly for painkillers and laxatives, your own medication returned, contact number in case of any problem and possible complications, details about your follow-up appointment. Once you are at home, if you notice any of the following, call us or your GP. High temperature or feeling generally unwell. Problems with your wound. Oozing, redness, sore to touch or smell. Loss of bowel or bladder control. Leg weakness. Severe headache. Shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing. Chest pain. Once you are home, your exercise plan will be really important in supporting your recovery and improving your outcome. Next, our physios will take you through your discharge exercise program. Before you leave the hospital, we will take you through the following exercise program designed to support your recovery. These exercises are to be followed for the first six weeks following surgery. Posture, while not an exercise, is an important part of your recovery. To maintain good posture, it is important to keep your shoulders and your tummy relaxed. Do not brace yourself as you may have done against the pain before your surgery. When standing, stand up straight, relaxing your shoulders and tummy. And when sitting, sit back into the chair with your back well supported, again relaxing your shoulders and tummy. Deep breathing. Deep breathing should be started immediately after surgery. It helps to keep your lungs clear and importantly, research shows that deep and slow breathing has a very positive impact on pain and so can be used to relieve any painful episodes. In a comfortable position, breathe in deeply and slowly as though you are filling your tummy with air. Now let the air out like a balloon deflating, allowing your body to soften. Spend at least 10 to 15 minutes doing this relaxation technique each day. Some patients find it helpful to start and finish the day like this. Ankle pump exercises. Move your feet up and down while lying in the bed. This is very good for your circulation until you are up and mobile. Leg slides. Lying on your back, slowly slide your leg up and down the bed, bending at the knee. Repeat 10 times on each leg, three times a day. Pelvic tilt and abdominal muscle activation. Lie on your back with your knees bent and your arms by your side. Gently flatten and arch your back a few times in order to find the mid position. This is your pelvic neutral. Now gently pull in your tummy below the belly button and hold for 10 seconds. Relax. Repeat 10 times, 3 times a day. Stepping while lying down. In your pelvic neutral position, rest your fingers just inside and below your hip bones. Start slowly stepping each leg, just raising your feet off the bed. Feel your tummy muscles working. Repeat 10 steps on each leg, three times a day. Semi-squats. Stand with your back to the wall about six inches out. With your feet hip distance apart, lean back against the wall. Bend your knees and slowly slide down the wall a small bit, as if you were going to sit in a high chair. Come back up again. 
Remember, this is not a full squat. Repeat 10 times, three times a day. Stairs. Following surgery, you can walk up and down the stairs as required. If you have pain or weakness in one leg, you may find the following method easiest. Hold the handrail for support. Go up the stairs, starting with your stronger or pain-free leg first. Then come down the stairs, starting with the weaker or painful leg first. Take it one step at a time till you feel confident and strong enough to step normally. Walking is one of the best exercises you can do in the first six weeks following your spinal surgery. Research shows that early progressive activation gives the best outcome from surgery. However, everyone progresses at a different rate, so it is important to listen to your body. For walking, wear loose, comfortable clothes and supportive footwear. Start walking on the flat for the same amount of time you were doing in the hospital. For example, a five minute continuous walk at a comfortable speed. Do this twice a day. Add in another two to five minutes every few days to your walking. Be guided by your comfort. Aim to walk 30 to 40 minutes within four to six weeks of your operation. You are allowed to add in slopes after two weeks. There is advice on sitting, driving, return to work and return to sport in your booklet that is appropriate for your surgery, but please discuss this with your consultant. You may have your ups and downs for a while, that's normal, but if you get back active, stay positive and take charge, you're far more likely to get a good result. Thank you for listening to this information and we hope it has helped you. Remember, you can always call us if you're worried or concerned about your surgery once you're at home.